Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. Well, you don't know if it's morning for them, but it's morning for us. It's always morning when you're listening to Mike and Adam's Dreams and Feelings. That could be stressful. What if they're trying to sleep? Yeah. What if our dulcet tones lull them to sleep? There's no sleep <laughs> till Brooklyn. Oh, let's stop it. Because we have a right to partay. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> you make me sad. Yes. I'm Mike. I'm Adam. I tried to say that like you. <laughs> I'm is, Adam. And this is Mike and Adam. Streams and feelings. Yay. Where can they find us, Mike? Um, Facebook. <laughs> Mike and Adam's Dreams and Feelings page. Dot com. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> it's not a dot com. Oh, you know okay. I can't afford the domain. So Mike and Adam's Dreams and Feelings. Type it into Facebook archive.org Mike and Adam's dreams and feelings you can download any one of our podcasts or YouTube you type in Mike and Adam's dreams and feelings yes and this is episode 51 where we will only make Beastie Boys references (laughs) it's intergalactic Friday yeah you can take a little bit of this or a little bit of that (laughs) yes (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> we the brass on those monkeys. <laughs> uh, I'm running out of stuff. <laughs> yes. Run, quickly running. Yes. Quickly running out of steam. Yes. Well, that's fun. Mhm. So, um maybe enough of these. <laughs> yes. Some of these puns. Yeah, okay. Moving so on quickly. <laughs> Beastie Boys Fridays is over. Rest in peace. Yes. Um, If you have any Beastie Boys puns or references, please send it as a comment to our YouTube page. Yes. So, Adam. So, Mike. You want to explain this wormhole. Oh, okay. Well, I've been doing a little bit more research over the past couple days, and um, I've come to the conclusion that I have no idea what's happening. (laughs) Yes, well, um, a little background knowledge. Uh, someone was microwaving their Fiber One bar next to our Transmorgifier. Yeah, who does that? <laughs> uh, his name rhymes with Saddam. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yes, it opened up a wormhole where two of our evil versions of ourselves are... Allegedly hunt- evil. Allegedly evil. Allegedly evil. I'm, I'm going to guess that they're more creepy now. <laughs> yeah. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? Right. They're, they're just very menacing and creepy, and they make the worst threats. Uh, worst threats ever. Uh, but basically, we, we had a question on our last podcast where someone asked, how can they send us letters and yet not know where we are? <laughs> True. And I want to say they do know where we are. They just, they're so psychological. Right. Well, it's it's less about knowing where we are and mm-hmm. knowing that our machine is connected to whatever machine is in their world. Right. So it's, it's less of a, it's less of a mail system where you put it in and then a postman comes and he comes and delivers it and more mm-hmm. like a shoot. Right. So they're, they're really, just, they're just toying with us. Mm-hmm. Breaking down our defenses. Yeah, they're gonna get us when we we least uh, when we least know it. At least expect it. Yeah. Well, jokes on them. I'm always expecting it. <laughs> jokes on them. I'm easy to kill. <laughs> <laughs> As his Halo Three KDA shows. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Any any game. Well, actually, you know, here's a great here's a great tie into video games. Yeah. I'm actually getting into MOBAs. Yeah? What game? Um, there's this game done made by Epic called Paragon. Yes. That I've been getting really into, and it's kind of like a... Uh, like Paragon uh, Wrestling? Uh, that was a great show. Mm. I'm, I'm so sad they, they <laughs> ended on that cliffhanger with uh, that vampire warrior guy. But anyways, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, but so uh, Paragon is kind of like Dota or that other one that people love. League of Legends. League of Legends. How Lo- are you not playing? Okay, I'm sorry. Lol. But Paragon it. is a behind 
uh, behind the camera, behind the character version of that, where you have to kind of break into people's camps. And I, I, I've been afraid of these games mm-hmm. until recently I learned that there's actually people you can win over. Yeah. I can actually get points and do things. Yeah. Mind you, right now I'm still against the computer. Oh. And the computer is it's pretty challenging, but they actually haven't won a game. But I'm feeling pretty confident um, if I can beat the computer, maybe I can beat a bunch of 13-year-olds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not. 13 year olds have a lot of time on their hands yes and a lot of cuss words yeah no that's that's very true Mm -hmm. interesting so you're playing paragon that's Mm -hmm. um and yeah it is it's made by epic that's with the oh i'm just looking up at the at the the information it's made Mm -hmm. by epic with the unreal engine so that's interesting that's cool yeah no i mean um mobas at least for me have always been um i don't know would you count like TF2 and um, uh, what is the other one? Uh, CS:GO. Well, yeah, I mean, there's this there's this new genre of mm-hmm. esports, mm-hmm. right? Well, with obviously with like League of Legends and mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, any other kind of. Well, there are, even then there are like different ones because there's like arena ones like Dota or um, right. League of Legends, but then. And it's kind of like the football of video games. You have all these strategies, these rules. It has to be fair and balanced. You can't... You have to, like, use mind games. And you have to use... I mean, you actually have to practice. Mm -hmm. That's, That's not the video games of my time. Where someone just offered you a controller and you did roll forward a punch until you shot a fireball and right. hoped for the best. This is where you have to like you have to have the right debuff versus mm-hmm. cooldown time versus um are, am I in the right lane? Am I at the right level? Am I doing enough basic damage versus enough ability damage? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh well MOBAs were, for the longest time, such a, a niche, little, small thing that was based on... Um, it was literally just built out of a Warcraft engine. It was... A, um, there were only a couple servers on the m- multiplayer for Warcraft 2, mm-hmm. which was the original... Then that eventually turned into the original Dota. Mm-hmm. And then out of the original Dota, you have Heroes of New Earth and some other... Um, some other small time games that were pretty popular in the the early two thousands, mm-hmm. late nineties, and then um, and then you have uh, that kind of takes a seat to for a little bit, and then Dota two comes out, and mm-hmm. League of Legends comes out, and it's like this whole thing now. Like you got you got a whole you got a whole bunch of games to play. Yeah, and I, honestly, there's no bigger game right now than League of Legends. It's it's pulling in. It's pulling in money right. and numbers there's um there's a stat that's flowing around like um the world's also their world competition with all mm-hmm. the teams from diff- all the different regions it pulls in more viewers than the um the 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 world series the ncaa finals and um uh, uh the nba championships combined wow so, so it has more viewers um, and because of that, now you have outside sponsors other than like Razor Gaming or you know those mm-hmm. other kind of the kind of Coca Cola owns logic. a team. Yeah, Coca Cola owns a team. Um, yeah, a bunch of a bunch of companies own teams. Samsung owns a team. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but even just with advertising, there are um, you know there are companies like like you said like Coca Cola that are advertising or Gatorade and um, you know brands are seeing the value and are, are buying in. Yeah. That and the fact in Korea you could make this a legit career. Yeah, the best the best guy in the world, his salary is like a million dollars. Yeah. So that's my aspirations now. That's my yeah. goal. Good luck. Let's get started when they were like twelve. Yeah. I'm gonna just call my wife real quick. Say yeah. I'll be in the office <laughs> training for my new salary. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You know, they say dress for the job you want. Yes. And That's I'm why I'm wearing it. this Mountain Dew shirt. <laughs> exactly. 
getting sponsored by Mountain Dew and Funyuns. Yes. Man, what a what a twist of culture. Mm-hmm. We used to think if it had the word sports, you actually at least had to be standing. Right. No, yeah. No. And that's why these um, these esports now are um, incredible. No, you're fine. Um, these esports, this evolution of esports now is really astounding. Like, yeah, it's it's a multi million dollar business. It is. It is. I guess. Would you consider poker a sport? Because it's on ESPN. <laughs> yeah. No one says yes, so it's yes. a sport. It's a sport. Yeah. Poker, bowling. Is bowling is a sport? No. Yeah. See, I don't. Well, the rule has always been, if you could eat nachos. Mm-hmm. While well, you play, it's not a sport, but that's changed. Well, you can do a lot of things while playing nachos. You like, <laughs> I could play football while eating nachos. Yeah, I mean, it would be it would be highly discouraged. <laughs> you could do it. Yes, I mean, and when today's today's athletes mm-hmm. can now eat like mozzarella sticks between acing whatever sport they're doing, right? We we live in a new world. It's an true. exciting new world. Yeah, it's true. No, I'm a couple of years ago, uh, the Boston Red Sox got in trouble. Um, they were uh, they were ordering and eating fried chicken like all the time in their dugout. Yeah. And um, yeah, that did not go over well. When oh fans man, that almost made me want to try <laughs> to try and play baseball. baseball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, they were yeah no they were drinking beer and eating fried chicken mm-hmm. and it just wasn't good. Yeah. Did I do my rant on baseball yet? No. Oh my gosh. You know, I always try to give baseball the benefit of the doubt. Because I know there's a lot of people that love it. Mm-hmm. There's people that follow the stats. There's people that get excited. But if you're like me, who wants constant action... Mm-hmm. It's not there. Whose eyes want to follow the ball and... Mm-hmm. Who wants to see someone score like every other turn? Wrong sport. Wrong sport. Yes, baseball is like, is like patience mm-hmm. and endurance. Yeah, and um, thankfulness for small miracles. Yeah, rolled into a sport. <laughs> me, I, me, I want explosions. I want dives and kicks in three hit combos and pentakills. Yeah, I mean that's why they have competitive gaming now for you, Mike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean they there's even um like competitive Street Fighter and stuff too. So you can I mean you can take your love for fighting games and, and go right there already. The WWE had an esports tournament. Oh really? Where um when I was watching it it was done by IGN. Mm-hmm. Kof- Kofi Kingston was yeah. playing um Against AJ Styles in Ultimate Marvel vs. Cap- Capcom, Capcom Infinity. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I know tons of tons of wrestlers are really interested. It, um, a lot of the, uh, pretty much all three of the New Day guys really like video games. Yes. And, um, even Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega loves video games. He can he competes pretty regularly with um, Street Fighter. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, no, so... It's 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 a it's a big thing. Even cool guys like Kenny Omega like video game. Oh yes, and this transitions into wrestling. Yes, um, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated just came out. Top five, was it fifty or five hundred wrestlers? Uh-huh. I think it was five hundred. There's a lot of wrestlers. I can't imagine that there's that many. <laughs> oh, I mean, across all time. Yes. Like Bruno well, San Martino. Well, no, this is like for the year. Oh, for the year? Yeah. So, That's a lot of wrestlers. Yeah. But number one is Okaida from New Japan. Okay. Okay. Is is um, Kenny Omega number two? Kenny, no, AJ Styles was number two. Kenny Omega is somewhere in the top ten. Oh, he's gotta be. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, Kenny Omega was the... F- he won a New Japan tournament. Yep. The Climax. Yep. The G1 Climax. The, the G1... Cl- and he was the first non-Japanese yeah. person... Yeah, to win. So that's pretty big. But mm-hmm. Okada, his, he keeps getting these, like, four or five star matches. Yeah, like, consistently. And they said that it reminds them of the HBK era, where yeah, he just was... gets better and yeah. better and better, yeah. No, definitely. There's something <clears throat> interesting. But also at the same time, like... The most of his best matches are coming with Kenny Omega. So having, yes. but but I feel like that's an interesting time because now the best wrestlers in the world aren't in the WWE necessarily. Right. Like you have, you have those you know those two guys going out there. But 
um, honestly, like the the level of uh, is has been the bar has been raised. Like even in Ring of Honor, you have um, Cody Rhodes and you have right. um, and Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal, and um, you have Marty Scrawl. <laughs> hey, stop stealing all my guys. Will Osprey. Will Osprey. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know the you know arguably the best tag team mm-hmm. wrestling in in the world, the Young Bucks, and they split their time between Ring of Honor and. Um, the G one because our mm-hmm. what is that wrestling? Uh, Total Japan yeah. or All Japan Pro Wrestling, um, and yeah, and and those guys are are you know the best in the world. Absolutely, and you know there there was always an assumption that when you went to the WWE, it meant you were popular. Right. It meant that you made it and mm-hmm. you were worthy of being known as a pro wrestler. Sure. But now with ROH um, pumping out all these guys, and even even Europe has a pretty yeah. happening wrestling scene with Trent Seven. And, yeah, Trent Seven's great. Yeah, so uh, Will Osprey is from yeah, absolutely. Too. Um, Joe Coffee, <laughs> yeah, 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 Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all all of these guys are proving that there are other places you can go to get great wrestling. But at the same time, um, ROH is kind of seen as uh, WWE's farm team. Yeah, well, even even below like NXT. Yes. Like, because um, so who do they bring in? Um, Adam. Uh, Adam Cole. Name? Adam Cole was original Bay Bay. Sorry. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we had to had to throw his catchphrase in there. Um, but no, he was from you know originally from ROH. Yeah. And there's Roderick been, Strong. Roderick Strong, yeah. Yeah, what well, I don't like the fact that in ROH, like in ROH, when you're world champion, like you're amazing. Mm-hmm. You're 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 at the top of your game. But mm-hmm. when and then you get sent over to NXT, and it's kind of like you're at the bottom of WWE's game. Right, and you have to get you have to work. Your yeah, way like, that. like Samoa Joe should have never been at the bottom of WWE's game. Mm-hmm. Um, you should that should. The WWE should be treating these guys as top card. I know that's not their policy. Mm. They like to get them through NXT, but p- being put in NXT is like... <clears throat> the example is like if Michael Jordan um, went from the Bulls to <laughs> the Magic, and they put him as like a right. fifth they seat off the stringer. Bench. Right, right, <laughs> yes. yeah. No, definitely. But I-, I also think that because of that, <clears throat> for the longest time, NXT has been a better product. Yeah, because for the longest time they had people like Finn Balor, who was also in Ring of Honor and yes. in um, New Japan, and um, AJ, you know AJ Styles. Um, well, he's been everywhere, but yeah. um, AJ Styles was there for the longest time. Some, like you said, Samoa Joe, um, even even their top guys now were in um, NXT. Right. Um, you know, so but it's <coughs> uh, like Seth Rollins and yeah. Um, uh, 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 Kevin Owens. Kevin and, Owens, and who was also on Ring of Honor. He was number champion. three. Kevin Owens, really? Yeah. yeah, no. Kevin Owens is great, um, <clears throat> but I I also think that right now um, the the WWE product um, is is really good. Like yeah. it, how compared to maybe five years ago, right? Now the sad thing about it is uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, when they when they rank these mm-hmm. WWE wrestlers, they always mention their greatest matches being at pay per views. Yeah, which I have no access to at all. <laughs> so everything I have based on WWE could be just like a lame show yeah, match. A long show. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but I I someone. There was a Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Yeah. Someone videotaped it. I don't know the legality of it. Yeah. And I, I saw it, and I got to see AJ Styles, his new persona, mm-hmm. which is very toned down. Mm, from, like, yeah. yeah, from his early days. Like, it's more technical. It's more on the floor. Yeah. Um, he will not go crazy in the ring, because he's 40 years old. Right, yeah. Um... It, it was very weird to see that a move that he used to throw out like water mm-hmm. became his finishing move that ends the match. Yeah. And that's the, the 
the thrusting forearm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I also think that might maybe that might be like a one-off thing because he was challenging a <laughs> McMahon. Yeah. So it wasn't, but. Um, some of the he's had some really like really really good matches with um, with John Cena when he was first getting in. Right. Like, he was he was going full tilt like yeah. hardcore and it, like you know um, uh, Impact Day <laughs> TNA Impact Days. Yeah. But yeah, no, I agree. Well, he's he's definitely he's well. I think it's also a product of him, you know, being forty. <laughs> yeah, he, he's forty. The WWE does not like. High flyers because of the risk and the insurance. Mm. Though Shane McMahon did do a falling star press Perfect. that only reached nothing. <laughs> so, um, so it. And a lot of those, a lot of those guys have been moved over to. The, so they they're trying to start a new lightweight division called, uh, and they have their own show called the the four hundred five. The four hundred five. Yeah, and it's um, so. Wait, my cruiserweight only. Yeah, it's cruiserweight coming... only. Yeah, oh, wow. so it's like um, William Neville and um, yeah, so it's it's really cool. So I think William Neville is currently the, the lightweight champion or the that 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 champion. Is this owned by the WWE? Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's called the four hundred five. I think so. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's pretty cool, but um, yeah, so they're they're doing all that crazy stuff over there. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean right now I think it's it's super exciting in the WWE. I mean Dean Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are uh, tag mm-hmm. team champions on Raw, and um, you got a, a serious title contention. The the women's division is red hot. Like it's right. Um, That's one thing wrong. we never thought would be serious mm-hmm. because of its of its focus on you know the sexuality. Sexuality. Yeah. They never thought that women could actually be wait, they could be real physical wrestlers. Yes, with, real with physical talent. wrestlers. Cuz you know back in the day you had like the glamazon and right. like, like bending over the ropes, right. shaking her bottom. And right. You're like, "No, no, that's that's usually when I fast forward it." Right. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know you're not going to get anything. Right, right. But now it's like real. Right, yeah, no, you have so many people, Becky Lynch, um, you have Bailey. It, it's just, the list goes on, and it's it's a real serious, deep um, women's division. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Ric Flair's daughter, what's her name? Uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, and yeah, so it's, it's, I don't know, that's a good time. That's a good time for wrestling. Yeah. Didn't they make the four horsewomen of the apocalypse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you gotta do it. If you got if you yeah. got Ric Flair's daughter, you, you gotta do something, right? And you know anything to get Ric Flair in front of the mic. <laughs> yes, it's, it's great. The hilarious thing is, um, if you ever buy a WWE versus SmackDown mm-hmm. between like the years of like two thousand and one to like two thousand and ten, mm-hmm. the the women's if you picked a women wrestler, their wrestling move was like pulling hair. Spanking, yeah, the other person, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I really hope that's changed. No, it, it, it has. Yeah, I'm sure it's gotta. Yeah, um, yeah. There's been, and you know, they called it a, uh, uh, they called it on Raw a, uh, a diva's revolution. Yes. Um, and yeah, so and that's even even that is a change. Like it's no longer called the divas division. It's no longer they no longer have a diva titles it's the women's world championship that's pretty cool and they're arguably their their championship belt looks way cooler than yeah isn't it is it still look like a butterfly it is no longer the butterfly it is on, i'll pull it up for you um he's pulling it up women's world there's so many chainsaws champion. on it yeah no there is <laughs> no <laughs> No, not hockey. We don't want a real sport like that. Yes. Uh, wrestling. Um, I've never been to a WWE show that I could... I'm, I've been to one house show, and it probably mm-hmm. cost more than anything. Someone... It was funded for work. Oh, really? Yeah. What work? Well, it was... Um, we worked at a house with uh, developmental disabilities, and hmm. as you know, they're in like, love at, with John Cena. Who doesn't love John Cena? Look at that. Look at that. that oh. it's, so it's white. Um, it's glittery. Well, yeah, so it's, there's diamonds and gold all over it, and then there's um, it's, there's a, bl- a red background with the, w, the two W's, wow. WWE, on it. And it's great. I mean, 
uh, the men's one looks like licorice. Uh, it's like it's like the exact opposite color. Does it have the, the smoking skull? <laughs> I never understood that. Right. Can you still win that title or what title? Which the one? Smoking skull title. No. Okay. <laughs> I guess when you win, you get to make your own title. I guess if you're popular enough. Mm-hmm. Like uh, John yeah, Cena's right. spinny one. Yeah. And they changed it all. Yeah. Uh, through the years, they, they've had some changes. But now it's really cool because you um, on the front of it, it's the WWE. But mm-hmm. then on the side, it gets personalized to the champion's logo. So when John Cena, it's his the three fingers. And then, yeah. So oh, they just style. It's... Did, I always thought that it was the same belt just traded off to different people but do you get your own belt when yeah you it gets personalized yeah so maybe side. john cena's house has like five different belts maybe probably yeah that's pretty interesting right my budget if in my wrestling would be so low you you we all just share the belt guys <laughs> just one just yes one <laughs> mm-hmm. makes it more prestigious yes. yeah and um you know they're doing great things with the the intercontinental yes. championship too um so yeah, no, it's it's all great. That was a good that was a good wrestling chat. I know, I know. We just lost all of our female audience. Yeah, no, nobody cares. Half of our male audience. Right. That just leaves like some My guy mom. named Joe, your yeah, mom. mom. Yeah, that's it. Hank. Yeah. Hank. <laughs> good old Hank. Good old Hank. Yeah. But yeah, but I I, I kind of wanted to bring mm. up the transmorgifier and oh how, yeah and how there's there's gifts oh yeah they keep sending it, in it gifts. looks like christmas with all the gifts it's that true. have been sent i don't here. trust any of them we're just gonna burn them all <laughs> well you know i want to open a few of them uh, i don't know i mean they only want to kill us yeah right <laughs> yes okay well uh if you want to go first okay well this one says mike on okay, it so okay. you know i'm gonna open mm-hmm. and you know this is very soft paper so you're not gonna hear it yeah yeah pre-opened yes okay so i'm opening it the card says um dear mike Mm -hmm. this gift is for you still want to kill you Mm -hmm. yours truly Mm -hmm. evil mike evil mike um and it's uh an orangutan skull (laughs) oh what (laughs) the skull of an orangutan look very interesting yes i don't I don't want to touch it. <laughs> oh, oh, but there's like a little there's a little note in its mouth. Nope. It says thinking of you. Why is it so slimy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. It smells okay. like lime jello. Oh my. It's, wow. It's not lime jello, Mike. Put that down. Oh, oh god. For All right. sake, please. Okay, Just okay. Leave it alone. I hope there's a gift receipt. Um, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Which, um, this, I got I got one of mine over here. Go ahead. Is it the one me. that's sausage shaped? Um, no. Uh, I'll save that for later. I was thinking about this really. Um, it's oddly shaped. It's almost like a sack. But oh, it's just um, a sack. Um, and the stains at the bottom of the sack uh, um, are interesting. Oh, it's literally just a bushel of apple cores. Oh, oh gosh. With a note, it's all sticky at the bottom. <laughs> yes. Where are they getting the ah, stickiness? I don't. I don't. I think probably from the apple cores. Yes. I said um, these are from the magical realm of Nod. Okay. <laughs> and Good they were know. former. They were golden apples that give you long life. And um, he's and Evil Adam says because you're not going to be living long. He took the liberty of eating the apples for us. Oh, it's poetic. He says, see you soon, XX. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, I'm going to open the sausage. Okay. Shape, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Even though your name's on it. Yes, do it. The note says, uh, dear Adam, mm-hmm. um, hope you enjoy death. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sincerely, loves and kisses, evil Adam. Right, right. Um, it's sticky. Oh, of course. Yes, it's yeah. very mm-hmm. sticky. I think there's a... And it smells like lime jello. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it looks like a deactivated 1950s <laughs> missile. <laughs> How is it that small? It's a, it's a small one. It's like a miniature one? For small wars. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, <laughs> Why is it sticky, though? It's, I, it's sticky. <laughs> it must be... 
It must be something with the transmorgifier. It's coming yes. through and makes it sticky. It makes it smell like lime jello. Yeah, but... it's this is like Fallout, you know, like the um the the handheld nuke launcher. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, my hand is literally stuck to it, and it's like mm. stuck to my pants. Yeah. Oh. And oh it, my. It's just You're gonna have a, some explaining to do. It's just a missile, and it says communism sucks. Wow! Right, oh. right I was not expecting. I was not expecting it to be a U.S. missile. Yes, I was I, thinking yeah, because typically in the Cold War, I guess maybe on there were the communist one. Maybe that maybe. makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna detach it from my pants. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And unstick it. Unstick it. I really hope they kept the gift receipt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about your gift? You can open one of mine. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, this one's from Evil Mike. Um, and it's, it's a little taller than normal. Yes. Um, opening it up and of, of course it's sticky, but, um, it smells like lime jello. Oh, here's the note. It says, dear Mike, hope you wear this to your next fall outing. Um, it'll surely <laughs> fall make, outing? yeah, yeah. And it says, um, that you'll enjoy, um, hopefully you'll enjoy, um, uh, your death. Oh. From Mike. Um, oh okay. my gosh. And it's. Actually, it's just a really awful steampunk cat. <laughs> oh, it's like it's a not, fedora. It's not even. It's not even like sticky or anything. It's just terrible. Oh, it just looks like someone went to J C Penny and. No, no, no. The tag. It's a tag says hot topics. Oh, it's hot. Of course, it's hot topic. I should have known. And um, that's just an awful hat. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, the note says all we have are Spencer's gifts and hot topics in our world. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, uh, no wonder sense. they're evil. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, but finally, this this gift I wanted to open. Um, it's sh- it's shaped. It's it's actually in gold wrapping. Oh wow! Yes. Is it for the both of us? Uh, yeah. It says for Mike and Adam. Oh wow! So we're gonna remove the. The ribbon. Mm-hmm. Also made of gold. Yep. I'm going to remove the box made out of gold. Mm. And inside is just a note. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. That's very elaborate for just a note. Yes, just a note. Mm. And it says, Dear Mike and Adam, mm. you don't know me, but I know your lives are in danger. Um, stay, stay vigilant. Stay true. Ooh. I am coming to find you and help you. Signed, The Masked Avenger. Oh! We just introduced a third character! <laughs> what do you mean, introduced? I mean... What do you mean, character? Uh, well, aren't we all characters? Yeah, it's, life is a stage. Yeah, life is a stage. And this is a character. Um, no, no, there, there's, there's a masked Avenger who's mm. looking out for us. Apparently. And he, he owns a lot of gold. Uh, apparently. Very flashy. He's very elaborate. He's yeah. very organized. I bet he's cute. Yes. None of this is sticky. Mm. Um, and oh, there's another note. Oh, oh. In my world, we have J.C. Penney's and Sears. <laughs> nice. Okay, good. That's a, okay. We can trust him. <laughs> yes, we can trust. We can him. trust. He's trustworthy. <laughs> so, guys, there's a there's a masked avenger mm. looking out for looking us. Looking out for us. He's gonna find us. Yes. He's gonna save us. She's. He's, He's a hero we all deserve. Yes. Is there a way we could, like, track him down? Um, maybe if we write him a letter. Yeah, let's write him a letter. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna, um, you just tell me what to write. Okay, okay. Um, Dear Masked Avenger. Dear Masked Avenger, got it. Okay, okay. Um, we appreciate... We appreciate... You looking out for us. You looking out for us. But we got this. But no, we, no, no, wait, no, no, wait, no, 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 erase, 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 erase. no, no, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, um, we desperately need you, we desperately need you, in our, our time of need, in our time of need, we can pay you in Twinkies and Ho-Hos, we can pay you in Twinkies and Ho-Hos, and our undying love, and our undying love, kiss, kiss, hug, 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 thumbs up emoji, yes, thumbs up emoji, poop emoji, poop emoji, yeah, <laughs> lol, uh, Love you like a sister. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mike and Adam. Mike and Adam. Perfect. All right. It's getting sent. Perfect. Sucked into the wormhole, which we only know goes to the evil world, so <laughs> I really hope that he's, he gets it too. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah. Oh, should we send him some of the gifts <laughs> we just got? Um, he doesn't want any of these. The, the deactivated missile. Mm. The fedora. He doesn't want that. The orangutan skull? Mm. Mm. He doesn't want it. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Well, you know, we love you, Mass Avenger. Maybe we should send him a list of things to get at Sears. Yeah. I need some new jeans. I mean, we have Sears, but I'm, <laughs> right, right. I'm also lazy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, okay. So, which brings us to our our next fun thing to do, and that is the top five. Yay! Doot-doot-doot-doot-doot! I just made that song up. So what's our top five for today? That is a good question, Mike. I have no idea. I'm kidding. Our top five is top five favorite sidekicks. Sidekicks! Mm-hmm. And this goes across movies, books, comic books. If you're a hero and you have someone by your side that you can trust, mm. we want to recognize you for being the top five sidekick. Um, so let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. Um, my first one is the Robin that's Jason Peter Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right. Well, first, it's often assumed that sidekicks, they, they get old, they take on the mantle of the superhero, they, they get inspired by the superhero, and move on with the, the justice in the American way, but not Jason Peter Todd. I love the fact that he started off as like this hell-raising orphan mm. who only wanted to... He actually stripped the Batmobile of its wheels before <laughs> Batman even met him. Mm-hmm. And Batman is like, okay, you're a troubled teen. Right, as with all his wards. Yes. Why not join me? Mm-hmm. So from the very start, he was just uh, full of trouble. And then, to make things worse, the Joker killed him. Yeah. And by some... By some miracle, he actually came to life in the Infinite Crisis series. Yeah. So, we have uh, Jason Todd, who is permanently evil, permanently like the anti-hero of Batman. His favorite weapon is just two pistols. Yeah, no. Firing into you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just like him because he's such a divergence from what we think sidekicks need to become. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, he's definitely different than the Nightwing yeah. kind of vigilante that, uh, you know, um, uh, that Grayson, Dick Grayson yeah. turns into. He's he's probably, you know, uh, diametrically opposite to right. Dick. And the, the, the cool thing is, in the comic books, we've always asked... Come on, Batman. Just just kill the bad guys. Just kill them. Mm-hmm. You know nothing bad's going to happen. Well, yeah. they actually tested that with Jason Todd, mm-hmm. where um, he went on a rant where he was killing every bad guy. Right. And the response was that they kept sending even more, more dastardly, more, like, um, vile bad guys. And, and until Gotham was, like, actually sending cannibals yeah and so the reason you don't kill bad guys is because they send even more vile ones so the more you kill them the worst gotham's villains become yeah and it's it's the classic line from the untouchables uh with sean connery Mm -hmm. you you know he famously says you know you send one one of ours to the hospital we send one of yours to the morgue so it's 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 an escalating level of violence right you know, when your baseline, you know, evil villain is, you know, the Joker, like, what's the next step up, you know? like who's... A cannibal named the Flamingo. Exactly. <laughs> Which is the name of the bad guy yes. in that series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah, but I, I like the idea. I, I like the, um, I, I like his character. He's, he's, he's a very postmodern um, iteration of what maybe a superhero and what a sidekick could be. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, you know, and he's, he's in across different medias. Like he's in, um, he is the, he's the Arkham Knight, right? In, yeah. In the Arkham Knight game. Oh, really? Spoilers. <laughs> Are you playing it right now? <laughs> I haven't played it. <laughs> oh, it's, and the game's been out for forever. Oh, wow. Okay. I know, but I don't have any of the higher systems. <laughs> so I'll, 
Uh, Spoilers. Well, there goes that. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, I could be wrong. I actually don't know. The Bronze Old Ghoul. Uh, um, that was my guess. <laughs> um, Who's your sidekick? Um, my number one is um, the wonderful, the amazing Sancho Panza. Sancho Panza? <laughs> yeah, do you have no idea who that is? No. Nor do I expect you to. Because he's in the first ever commonly accepted novel called Drumroll. Yes. Drumroll. You're, n- you're never going to guess. Um, but do you know the phrase tilting at windmills? Yes. Are you going to say something about that Don Quixote? Yeah, Don Quixote. Um, so Don Quixote is, is a novel that came out around the turn of the century. It was a, it was a while back. But mm-hmm. um, it's about this confused older guy uh, who mm-hmm. wants to be a knight. Um, so he gets a donkey, gets really terrible armor, and he goes throughout the countryside pre- uh, pretending to uphold, like, these things about chivalry and all this stuff, and he gets up to, like, kind of hijinks, but his, um, his squire, his sidekick is Sancho Panza. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like I had to throw him in, um, as in probably maybe, um, the, maybe the first recorded literary sidekick. Um, wow, yeah, that is pretty important. Mm. Also very important that we haven't rebooted it into a movie <laughs> with, uh, I don't know, any one of our pretty boy stars. Right, right. George one the, Clooney. One is, of the Chris's. Yes, one of the Chris's is Sancho Panza. Yes. With George Clooney. Exactly, as, as Don Quixote. Yes, yes. So, my number two is the sidekick to Green Arrow, Speedy. mm I like Speedy. He, like she's not a well-known sidekick. You're going to you're always going to get Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal is always the the drug-addicted sidekick of the Green Arrow. Yeah, that's in that's in the Arrowverse is what you're talking yeah. about. The 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 TV show. Yeah. Because Speedy in just regular DC is a dude. Yeah. Well, she later became or it, it the mantle life. gives it to the yeah, girl. Yeah. And then she joins the Teen Titans. Yeah. And then, w- this is why I chose her as number mm. two, mm. is because she la- she later contracts uh, AIDS. Yeah. So, uh, and that's interesting. I think what the DC was trying to do is saying, because, you know, in the comic book universe, you usually get, like, some alien virus or right. some weird sci-fi element well they they decided to give her something that's very real right. very tragic and her story is like uh guys uh, you know while you're trying to bring back superboy from the dead if you don't mind looking for a, a, a cure for aids right. that would be really great and mm-hmm. she kind of humanizes it and you know i really i really like that i never i never figured out what happens to her because i only have bits and pieces mm-hmm. but definitely yeah definitely yeah, well, that's a that's a good one. Um, again, staying away from superheroes, my next one is also a literary and movie star, yes. Samwise Gamgee's. Oh, I'm glad I didn't pick him. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the stalwart human element in um, J.R.R. Tolkien's epic three-part um, epic. There's no other word for it. Nine-part. Nine-part. Twelve-part. <laughs> yes. Who yes. knows. Um, but yeah, but Samwise is the um, the you know Frodo's moral compass. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's there to carry him um, throughout, and um, frankly, gets treated worse than he deserves. Yeah. And his his loyalty and his undying love to to Frodo is um, you know what we all aspire to be in terms of our, our friendships. Yeah. And we know his strength rating is somewhere between. Lifting Frodo and lifting Frodo while wearing a ring. Exactly. <laughs> yes. so, that's pretty strong in my book. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, yeah, same way as Gamgee's. Yes. Um, number three mm. is a public domain superhero. Ooh. Um, it was picked up again by a series called Superpowers, mm-hmm. where they took all the public domain heroes and made them into their own like Justice League. Um, it's the boy king. Okay. It's this um, this boy who has the royalty of kingship, mm-hmm. and he owns this like huge concrete statue giant mm-hmm. that does his bidding. I like him because he's so overpowered. The the statue is. <laughs> yes. The, mm-hmm. the you could just 
use your giant and like you you're probably stronger than Batman right. <laughs> at that point. Mm. So he's not even really a sidekick, but he's always been known as the sidekick to a superhero. Um but yeah, he's he's the boy king. Mhm. And he just owns this this huge giant that does his bidding. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yes. That's cool. He's like an Ozymandias, like, yeah. super rich. His his superpower is his richness. Yeah, his richness. Mm. He owns OP stuff. Right. That's how I want to go out. Still, still no superhero sidekick. No. But my... I doing it. Right. My, my number three and is the one, the only walking carpet... Chewbacca. Chewbacca. <laughs> yes. The arguably the one of the greatest Star Wars characters of all time. I, I bet if you make a list with someone asking them with who their favorite Star Wars character, somewhere in their top ten they're gonna pick Chewbacca. He's got yes. that he's got that awesome bowcaster, you know, he's got the he's got the yell, mm-hmm. he's got and you just wanna cuddle him. He just yeah. looks he just looks cuddly. Yeah. I know, like He's, he's, he's portrayed as very threatening. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll rip your arms off if right. you lose to him in chess. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but then again, there's very few, like, very feral things he does in this, right. in this series. Right. He actually saves right. 3PO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And R2, and everyone. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah like, Chewbacca, yeah, Chewbacca's great. I love Chewbacca. Um, the, the moment where, um... I think the moment that always gets me is when Han Solo is getting frozen in carbonite and Chewbacca yeah. kind of like gives that like that like cry. Yeah. I, like it always gets me. It's always yeah. sad. I, I like that they mentioned his gun in episode seven because mm. he's like he's shooting bad guys and like Han Solo's like can I use that gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my number four is from Hello My or My Name is Earl. Randy Hickey. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, my name is Earl. Mm-hmm. Well, so there's there's these two brothers, mm-hmm. Earl Hickey, mm-hmm. who he lived a life of just hijinks and shenanigans and ruined a lot of people's lives. Uh-huh. So As he you do. Uh, yeah. Had, so he believes he has to repay like over 50 people. He has a whole list. And his brother Randy, who's kind of aloof, he's just like this big aloof guy. Um, decides to kind of come along and help him with these things, even mm-hmm. though he has nothing to do with it, any mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Randy Hickey is like the the comedy, the fall guy, right? And the, the dumb things that kind of come out of his mouth uh, make his brother look like the hero. So, right. um, you can't have an episode of "Hello, My Name Is Earl" without Randy Hickey, right? Just being hilarious. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Intriguing. My number four, still no superhero, yes. <laughs> but it's Tails from Sonic. What? Yeah, Miles Prowler himself, the double tail fucks. Um, you know, it's with he doesn't really. I don't think he makes his appearance until what Sonic Two, right? Because he's mm-hmm. not in the first Sonic. But there's just something iconic about you know Sonic streaking through Green Hill Zone and you know Tails right behind him. Propelling himself through the air with his right, tails, right? Right. Um, and um, yeah, no, and he's he's obviously a series mainstay, uh, a popular character, and um, I think there's even um, you can play as him in a multiplayer mode, right? On yeah, on one of them. So yeah, and and uh, there there are very few other characters that are as recognizable as Tails is. Yeah. Um, even people outside of video game dom. Can yeah, recognize it's a tells. love-hate relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, ugh, Tails. <laughs> the person who ruined the Sonic series. Mm-hmm. Or, oh yeah, Tails, player two. I remember playing with my brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I usually attribute um, the Sega... Um, <laughs> The, uh, the Sega Dreamcast with destroying yes. the Sonic series because at that point they decided to go from like a 2.5D kind of thing to like yeah. a full 3D and at that point it was just like, and we're done. Here. Well, yeah. With the exception that Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 yeah. were decent games. Yes. And it wasn't until PS or PS2 mm. with uh, oh gosh, that that shadow 
Yeah. Shadow the Hedgehog game. Um, and then the PS3 with Sonic the Hedgehog where he falls in love with a human girl. Yeah, yeah. And then just things just start getting weird. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so so no thank you. And uh, if we're really honest, Amy Rose destroys Sonic. Yes. The one person that did not deserve. Hmm. And then you have Sonic Boom, <laughs> which is where... It's like Sonic and Amy and all the characters, but they have like long legs and they look Ugh. more mature. That's weird. And oh, uh, and the fact that the game has like only a few lines of dialogue, and the character will repeat it over and over in oh, the level. Gross. Oh man, there's just so much, so much damage control yeah. Sega has to do. Come on, Sega. Yeah. Go back to what you love doing. Yeah. Making systems. <laughs> Systems are 2D platformers. Yes. Um, my number one, number five, the ultimate, <coughs> is actually the first sidekick in... Ultimo Dragon? Sorry. <laughs> I love him too. The first sidekick in history. Mm -hmm. This is an IRL mm. person, character, and that is Jonathan King David's... <laughs> right hand man and warrior the sidekick you went bible <laughs> I went bible well there's just and I have to go bible because there's a story where Jonathan just climbs up and, okay so little backstory. David is being hunted by King Solomon mm -hmm. and also being hunted by the Philistines and so Jonathan one day takes his sword and his armor bearer and just he climbs up a mountain and he sees the oh. the enemy. It's it's more than a mountain. It's a sheer cliff face. Come on, Mike. Yes. Give him give him some more credit. Yes. And he sees the whole army of the Philistines, and he's like, you know what? I can take them. Yeah. And he does take them. He does. He kills yes. all of them. He kills all of them, and he's just like another day, an another, another dollar. dollar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that is awesome. Like. You just don't get better than that. I would put that, like, in the same realm as killing a giant. Yeah, no, definitely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but what's funny about that is usually, typically, you have um, the, uh, the main character, like Batman or mm -hmm. Green Lantern or whoever it is, and their, their, their ward is younger than them. Yes. Well, in that case, Jonathan is older than David. Right. So almost the, the, the same age gap between Jonathan and David would probably be the same age gap between Batman and Robin, but in reverse. <laughs> yes. So the, that's weird. Young David hanging out with this older guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not that, like, I don't know, he'd be like 30. 30, yeah. 25, 30. Oh, yeah. Reverse mentorship. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, that, that's a good one. Yes. And I feel almost bad about my my number five. You picked Satan, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> um, but it's, um, I couldn't decide between these two characters because they're so big, they're so iconic, and their shows couldn't exist without them. Mm -hmm. And so it's a tie between Patrick Starr. No! <laughs> and... And Pikachu. Pikachu, no! Yeah. Um, you can't, you literally can't go anywhere without seeing a Pikachu or a Patrick Star. They've, they've taken over. There's, there are theme parks in Japan with Pikachu mm -hmm. everywhere. There's... I would almost venture to say that Ash is the sidekick. <laughs> to, be at, to Pikachu at this point, probably. Yes. Um... But there's, um, he's, he is everywhere to the point that he has his own video games. Like, yep. I, 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 You're talking about Patrick Starr. Yeah, Patrick Starr. <laughs> yes. Um, that, um, yeah, no, I, you name me another side character, uh, this other side, a, a psychic that has his own video game, his own series, his own, he has his own movie. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, so. Like yeah, so Pikachu takes sidekicking to the next level. He's uh, he's an icon unto himself, um, and you know he's Japan's Mickey Mouse. It is that nah, you know I. The more you bring that up, the more it disgusts me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that yeah, he, he is a sidekick, and he is he's idolized. Yeah, uh, an electrical rat. Yeah, he's adorable. Mike, you don't think he's adorable, do you? 
I, well, you know, little, a little, I feel a little burned because I could never get him in the Pokemon series. You just go to the Viridian Forest, man. They're all over. No, no, I, t- I always get those those Rattata. And... Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta put your time in. They're they're rare. You yeah, can just go to the power plant, man. I know. Where you I... catch the Abydos? Come on, come on. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm I'm a little burned by that. Yeah. <laughs> or you could just get Pokemon Yellow and you start with a Pikachu. Right. Yeah, couldn't afford it. <laughs> I, I made my bad when I got the blue one. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so Pikachu, and then Patrick Starr. I gotta, I gotta praise some, some praise for my boy, the comic relief. He's kind of the Randy Hickey. Yeah, of, of SpongeBob. Of SpongeBob, he's yeah. hilarious. He's funny. He, um, he, he is an idiot, but every once in a while, he'll just have a nugget of levity, mm-hmm. or um, a, a nugget of like a fourth wall break, or he'll just acknowledge that something is rid- ridiculously happening, and mm-hmm. it's hilarious. Um, one of my favorite moments is. There's a bit where Patrick, um, like, goes out grocery shopping, and he comes back, and through some incident that's going on in Bikini Bottom, mm-hmm. all the residents are hiding under his rock where he lives, mm-hmm. and he comes back, and he shouts, who are you people? Mm-hmm. And it, it, I find that moment so funny, because it's one, it's one of those things where it's like, in a cartoon, it seems like everyone knows each other, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and he, he breaks that convention, and he, oh, he yes. doesn't know who they are, and... Just the way that he bellows it, and mm-hmm. um, it's just his character is just so wonderfully well written. He's always a, excused upon a bright star um, yes. in uh, in in the show, and he um, he never fails to make me laugh. Right, I I I remember a quote from Facebook that mm-hmm. people like to, and it's it's actually very deep for that yeah. show. Yeah, when uh, he's telling SpongeBob. It's my job to trust you. It's your job to prove me wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Right. It's like, it's straight out of wisdom. Right. Yeah. No. He's yeah. Patrick is great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, shout out to sidekicks. You can yeah. be main characters too if you try hard enough. Yes. There's a Chuck Norris movie called Sidekicks. <laughs> is he a sidekick? Or. He, I remember it came out the same time as Super Mario Brothers the movie, mm-hmm. and I had to choose between one or the other for my birthday. Right, and I was doing karate at the time, so Chuck Norris' sidekicks uh, beat it out, and it was about uh, Chuck Norris teaching this young kid how to fend off bullies. Yeah, through karate, mm-hmm. of course, as you do. Um, and the final scene is not like a, a karate tournament, though. Chuck Norris he had his own like evil nemesis that wanted to beat him in a karate tournament, but he had to teach the kid how to smash concrete blocks with his fists. Okay. And so that was the final thing. That was like the, that was the antagonist, is these concrete blocks. What the? And, and I remember the ending of the movie, he's like, I believe in you, you can do it. In fact, I'm going to set these concrete blocks on fire to show you that you can do it. And the kid does it. And it's it's pretty much the lame version of Karate Kid. That sounds like an awful movie. Yeah, we should watch it. I'm mad that you watched that. I'm glad. I'm a better person. No, you're not. I'm smashing concrete blocks no. left and right no. now. No, Mike. No, mm-hmm. no, just no, just no, no, Mike. Yeah, I'm well, disappointed. Yeah. Well, you know we've we've never ended our show after mm. a top five, but I think we do because you have to get to class. Um, I have a little bit of time. It's fine. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, but, yeah, did, did you want to, do you have anything you want to talk about? I feel kind of weird just ending on a top five. I, I know, I mean, there's so much in the news, like, I don't want to open any cans of worms. I mean, I got, I got ten minutes, we can, I can have ten minutes. Well, in ten minutes, uh, the biggest controversy mm. is, yes, a lot of tragedies have happened, but yeah. our president-in-chief said, you'll be with us in our thoughts and prayers. Sure. And that's getting, gotten tons of criticism. He, um, anyone who's hated him has said, "Yeah, that's so cheap." Thoughts and prayers, and right. like, yeah, why don't you do something about it? And mm-hmm. like, and it, it comes back to the "You'll be in my thoughts and prayers." as kind of the the cop out phrase yeah. for when something bad happens. We mm-hmm. we kind of say it to kind of pave mm-hmm. the make everything sound better. Yeah, 
And especially when you're in when you're in ministry mm. and you need to get support from the church sure. and you, you present you like um, you know, here's my ministry, will you get on board? And they'll be like, uh, well you'll definitely be in my prayers. Yeah. And you know, I wonder if you're being sincere and authentic or you're just saying that because you don't want to hurt my feelings and you just you don't want to say no. Mm, right. You're in my thoughts and prayers, it's just a more Christian way to say no. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, first, I want to say one of my favorite memes that has come out of this um, is there's a picture of like a moving truck and yeah. it's like um, and it's like it's open and it's empty and it was and it, it's been in response to like any of the, the awful like hurricane tragedies yeah. or anything and it says the first shipment of thoughts and prayers has arrived for <laughs> um, uh, yes. Hurricane Irma or whatever it is mm-hmm. um, and. Yeah, and and I agree. Like, um, our 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 faith starts with prayer. Um, like, right, it's so important. Right, like it's um, yeah. Because and I I feel like the the whole oh you'll be in my prayers thing is has cheapened not um, both not only um, not doing anything but also cheapens what we think prayer is. Yeah, like prayer is literally going to the King of Kings and saying, hey, like mm-hmm. I need help. I, right. I, I I need to I'm 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 turning to my the the one source that I know will always come through. Absolutely. And, yeah. Um. So we we never want to cheapen that. Like that's um. Right. Prayers are are so important. And that's why I don't want to I don't want to scold the person exactly. when they said you're in my thoughts and prayers because there's times when prayer is actually preferred over doing something. Absolutely. Yeah. But I just want to know. But when they when they say it and not yes. do it, like that's and that's the cheapening process right. of it. Or if they're if they're praying for us, are is it like a prayer of guilt? Like oh, I couldn't help them. Right. But, uh, God, just do something good for this person. Mm, right. Yeah. Maybe the prayer is, Lord, help me to help this person. Right. Like use me in some way. Right. Yeah. Like I, I you know, you, you know, and you, you and I both know that there are count, countless of countless ministers and ministries and um there are there are there are hundreds of ways to help besides just um you know monetarily or prayer like sometimes um sometimes an individual will pray and then they'll realize that they their heart really is in the ministry that they're praying for right. they'll come on board and um i know i know um an individual at our at, at rockport that um his um in the past that he and his wife have, have made cookies for us every every tuesday night and that's and that's such a mm-hmm. that's such a thing that you would you, you you wouldn't think would be a cornerstone of a ministry, but like when you when you think about it, like mm-hmm. uh, having homemade cookies or something, having that welcoming kind of environment and showing that we actually care about someone, like that's that, that was huge. Like people um, that, that opened a lot of conversations for us. So um, you know, like sometimes prayer provides in other ways that you know we weren't even yeah. expecting. On the flip side, there's a lot of people who came to me with their ministry. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, I'll support you. So I do it like a one-time donation. Yeah. And then I've just realized I, I've not been praying for these people. Right. Yeah. Which is, it could be even more dangerous. Yeah. In some cases, um, just giving money and not kind of putting your whole heart into yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as as important and as great as getting monetarily supported is, um, you know, I would mm-hmm. so much, I would covet so much more, and I'm sure Jesus would say the same thing too. With someone that is. Giving, um, giving until it hurts a little bit, sacrificing a little bit, but more importantly, sacrificing spiritually. Giving, yeah. giving, um, giving time in, in prayer and, and um, time um, for t- 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 you know to meet yeah. people's needs. I, I've I've realized that sincere prayer and actually wanting to help and having the means to help are they they align with each other. Yeah, the people who actually want to see campus ambassadors grow are the people who genuinely ask, do I have anything to give, and then give if the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, besides, you know, there might be someone, and I don't know their heart at all, but they're like, they kind of hear just like the dime store version of your ministry, mm-hmm. and they're like, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you're doing it. You'll be in my thoughts and prayers. Right. And I'm like, am I really? Am I? Yeah, right. Did I check up on them? Right. What was what was your top prayers today? And right. Mm-hmm. Where did I rank? Right. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, yeah, and there's, 
Um, yeah, and there's almost like a faith that comes with that. Like yeah. you're saying that you'll pray for me, and like you're like, okay, well, hopefully. Yeah. The interesting thing is, there's there's so many. When you're in a Christian community, there's everyone and their neighbor is doing something. Mm-hmm. Like I know at least five people that need support and prayer, and it's hard to balance. Like, okay, I could I could spend my whole life praying for these people and getting around them thing getting around their ministry and not even not even have to take care of my own Mm -hmm. so i mean it's a balancing act as well yeah and it's a faith that god is big enough to provide for everyone according to their needs and that's you know that's that's the faith aspect of it yeah god needs more people to work for kodak yeah and then have people like me show up at their door yeah and ask them for their money from Kodak. Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, if you're out there and you're listening, support your local missionary. Support your local Kodak. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, man, that was that was a good pod, buddy. That yeah. Was, that was a good one. Yeah. I think we nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. This is the season where we, we nail things. And um, when, when are we going to get closure on this whole wormhole animal? Hopefully animal. never if these uh, these presents keep coming. Yes. Well, well, I haven't been impressed by the presents yet. Uh, I mean, that um, skull is going to look great on your desk, though. I know. Clean it up a little bit. The lime jello smell. Yeah, yeah it'll be good. great. Yeah. It's a little bleach. Yeah. It'll be good. What did you, what did you learn today, Mike? Well, um, I learned that some people are bad gift givers. Yeah. And some are great gift yes. givers. Some are great gift givers. Like, that nuke was great, man. Yes. I can think of a million ways to use it. Yes. And also, that worlds that are owned by uh, Spencer Skiffs yeah, are and evil. Hot Topics are evil. Are they evil. will make you pure evil. It's true. It's true. Um, I learned that I need to appreciate um, superhero sidekicks more. Mm-hmm. Um, and At least five yeah, at least five. <laughs> and I'm uh, I'm a hipster for picking Sancho Panza. Oh yes. I, did you choose him ironically? Um, I didn't. I actually chose him enthusiastically. He was the first person I thought of when I thought sidekick. Yeah, I looked up sidekicks and I saw Sancho Panza, and you know what I thought? What? Like that has to be for a character from a Netflix series. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Yes. Might as well be. Yes. And so, yeah, what a great, that was a great episode. Yes, right? what, yes. What, um, what can you promise is going to be on next week's episode? Next week's episode, I, I really, I really want to make physical contact with our, <laughs> our <laughs> nemesis. That sounds sketchy. Yes. Or if they're stronger than us. Um, well, no, if well, anything let like me, me. Let me, let me phrase that. I don't mean if. When they're stronger than us, what are we going to do? Um, well, you know, that's why we need the, the YouTube community and our listener community. Please, we, ne- we need ways to defeat yeah. the nemesis. Our lives are in mortal danger. Right. And all we have is the Mass Avenger, yeah. who's very good at organizing gifts. Yeah. And very good at rapping. Right. So. Uh, Not like Marky Mark. Yes. Like, more like Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart rapping, yeah. yes. Yeah. So please, please um, tell us how we can overcome this obstacle, because our lives are in danger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can promise next week that we're going to have an octopus. Yes. <laughs> and I can promise next week that that orangutan skull is going to turn into an orangutan. Wow, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> yes. Orangutans are really strong. Yes. Maybe we can train it to fight for us. Yes. Make it a battle monkey. Right. And also, I forgot that there's so many side quests to this story. <laughs> I think I think Evil Mike is collecting emeralds. Oh yeah, I forgot about I, that. I don't know why though. Crystals, yeah, yeah. Crystals. Um, so maybe maybe you can tell us why he's collecting crystals. Cause yeah, because we don't know. We don't know. Is it gonna hurt us? Is it? Can we use it against him? Right. Can we eat them? Can we eat them? Yeah. So we have a nuke now. We we do have a nuke. It's deactivated, but I could maybe activate it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's crystals in the nuke. Great, great. Or maybe we can just fire it at them. Maybe we're a sequel to a Sonic game. <laughs> Ugh. Gross. <laughs> as long as maybe if it's Sonic to yeah. Sonic or Sonic and Knuckles, uh, I can get Yeah, it maybe, that. maybe. But anyways, there's just something about that tower that I really love. Yes. It's like Legos and video games, two of my uh, building yeah. blocks of my childhood. 
right? Absolutely. Pun, in, pun intended. <laughs> okay, well, I gotta go to school. Yep. And you'll be in my thoughts and prayers. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Goodbye, Mike. Goodbye, Adam. See you next week. See you next week. And I'm still here. Bye. Bye.